Good afternoon and welcome to today's webinar on the use of aerogels in building refurbishment applications. My name is John Johnston and I'm the National Key Account Manager at the Proctor Group. As is usual, we'll be following the presentation with a question and answer session, so feel free to type your questions into the comment box or email webinar at proctorgroup.com. We'll start with a brief overview of the basic physics of thermal insulation and how these apply to refurbishment projects, and look at how aerogels are manufactured. We will then move on to the practical applications of our space therm range of products and how they can be used to modernise the energy performance of a variety of existing structures without sacrificing much of the internal footprint or aesthetics. When we talk about insulating buildings, we usually talk about U-values. A U-value quantifies the rate of heat loss through a building element such as walls, roof, windows and doors. The lower the U-value is, the slower the heat generated by the heating systems can escape from the building, and less energy input will be needed to maintain a comfortable internal temperature. To improve the U-value of a given element, let's use a wall as our example, we add thermal insulation board or blankets to keep the heat in. A specific thickness of a given material has a thermal resistance, and to work out the U-value, we add all the R-values in our wall together and take the inverse of the result. Because this is an inverse, the more insulation we add, the more we need to add to improve the U-value further. Not all materials insulate equally well though, and to define that we use the value called thermal conductivity or lambda value. Materials like bricks or metal have a high thermal conductivity, while insulation material like mineral wool or rigid foams have a far lower conductivity. The thermal conductivity of a material is usually independent of the thickness. So if we bring all this together, we can take the thickness of our materials and divide those by their thermal conductivity to get the R values. We can then add those R values together and take the inverse to get the U value. This is then adjusted for any penetrations like structural elements called repeating thermal bridges. Any fixings or air gaps present and a few other correction factors to give us a final U value for the element. The next step is to take all our U values weight them by area and derive an overall average for the entire building. We then adjust that to account for non-repeating thermal bridges like corner junctions, floor zones, etc. and end up with our complete heat loss model. Modern new build homes typically have wall U values of around 0.2 watts per meter squared Kelvin, while traditional older properties with solid walls will be more like 2 watts per meter squared Kelvin. An order of magnitude worse, which will have a significant effect on both heating bills of the property and the quality of life for the occupants. This is especially true where occupants are considered to be in fuel poverty or belong to a particularly vulnerable social group such as the elderly. In such groups, poor thermal insulation can lead to a variety of health problems, so it's important that upgrading such homes is considered a priority. In historic buildings, however, this priority must be balanced against retaining architectural features and maintaining the character of the building and its aesthetic qualities, as well as ensuring the internal spaces remain large enough to be fit for purpose. Strategies to upgrade the energy performance of existing buildings must therefore be carefully considered, and considered holistically, as actions affecting one aspect of the building may have unforeseen consequences in another. While successive government strategies have focused on reducing energy use in older buildings, the wider implications of this have not always been fully considered. Designers must therefore have a good understanding of the materials being used both in the upgrade process and the original construction. At the A. Proctor Group, we have invested in the importance of HAM principles, the balance of heat, air and moisture movement, and of products and solutions taking into account all aspects of the building envelope. By recognising that refurbishment cannot simply upgrade thermal insulation without also addressing the balance of moisture movement and air leakage, we can ensure that the most optimal upgrade solutions are achieved. There's a great many types of insulation on the market with a wide range of thermal conductivity. The right choice for a project depends on a great many factors, 
but today we're going to focus particularly on refurbishment applications and historic buildings, which pose specific challenges. The first of these challenges is that older buildings typically benefit from higher vapour permeable insulation. This is because traditional building materials such as lime-based mortar and plaster have very different hydrothermal properties from their modern equivalents. Adding insulation of low permeability such as rigid foam can lead to damaging moisture problems for two primary reasons. Firstly, adding insulation will reduce the temperature of the existing wall masonry, making it more likely that condensation will occur. This will occur further to the inside as there will be less heat penetrating from the living spaces to warm up the masonry. Secondly, some insulation types such as rigid foams can prevent the drying out of condensed moisture inwards into the building, further compounding the problems. If not properly accounted for in the design, the moisture accumulation can continue unchecked, leading to increased problems with damp and mould over time, and in extreme cases causing the masonry to degrade due to freeze-thaw cycling. Permeable insulation prevents moisture being trapped in the construction and does not disrupt the established balance of the moisture flows within the building fabric to the same degree. However, traditional types of moisture vapour permeable insulation such as mineral fibre tend to be very bulky. This leads on to the second challenge in historical refurbishment, preserving interior space. While mineral fibre or natural wool do a good job ensuring moisture can permeate, their relatively high thermal conductivity means achieving modern thermal standards can require up to 200 mm of thickness, which is not always practical to incorporate into an existing space. Aerogel composites such as our space therm on the other hand can maintain permeability while reducing the required depth dramatically. This makes it ideal for use in rooms with limited floor areas, as well as at door and window reveals and other areas where retaining existing features such as decorative cornices limits the use of thick and bulky insulation. Aerogel is a very low density solid that was developed in the 1930s, but has only recently found mainstream uses. An aerogel is a gel in which liquid is replaced by gas without shrinking via a complex process called supercritical drying. The silica aerogel used in space therm insulation products is essentially puffed up sand, best described as being to sand what a rice crispy is to rice. The resultant structure is 97% air entrapped into nano-sized pores, and while a superb thermal insulator, it is very brittle, limiting its practical applications. Space Therm Aerogel takes its aerogel and embeds it into fibrous mat to achieve a combination of excellent thermal performance and robust flexibility. The thermal conductivity of 0.015 watts per meter Kelvin makes it amongst the best thermal insulations in use today, which combined with its high vapour permeability makes it ideal for refurbishments. Space Therm Aerogel is also hydrophobic, meaning it repels liquid water. And because the aerogel insulation blanket contains no blowing agents, it does not release harmful gases into the building over time. Nor does its performance degrade, with extensive testing showing no loss of thermal performance over a 50 year period. At the more extensive end of building refurbishment are facade retention projects, where the majority of the building is demolished and replaced with a new modern build structure, retaining only the facade from the existing structure. While this method resolves a great number of the issues inherent in such projects by simply replacing the problematic elements and features with modern equivalents, designing an effective interface between what is replaced and what is retained can still be challenging. Air leakage and coal bridging are the most significant problems to overcome in these areas, so by combining a vapour permeable self-adhesive air barrier membrane with a layer of high performance insulation, RAPTHERM offers a simple and compelling solution to these issues. Wrap therm is installed on the reverse of the retained facade stonework in a similar way to many self-adhering damp proofing materials. However, as wrap therm is vapour permeable, it does not adversely affect the movement of the moisture through the facade stonework. This helps limit the damage that can occur when moisture flow through older stonework is altered by upgraded works. As well as protecting the existing building fabric, Wrap Therm's hydrophobic properties provide a secondary barrier to water ingress by sealing tightly to the door and window frames and other penetration.
This also limits the heat loss associated with air leakage. The unique layer of aerogel insulation within the wrap therm also effectively limits cold bridging by providing a continuous insulation layer across the back of the facade. So there's a thermal break between the new structure internally and the colder outer stone, providing a further boost to the energy performance of the upgraded building. By combining these into a single material, wrap therm not only speeds up and simplifies the insulation process, but reduces on-site defects and requirements for costly remediation works. While wrap therm is focused more on extensive refurbishment developments, small-scale projects can still achieve the same performance benefits using the Space Therm WL wall liner system. This comprises aerogel insulation bonded to a durable 3mm magnesium oxide facing board and fixed in place internally using a gap filling adhesive. The panels can be jointed, painted and decorated in the same way as a normal plasterboard wall. It is supplied in a 1200x600mm panel weighing just 4.9kg, meaning that sheets are easily handled by one person and can be easily moved to hard to reach areas or stored on site without affecting access. Once installed, the system provides a significant reduction in heat loss, with a minimal 13mm increase in the wall thickness, meaning in most cases sockets, switches, TV stroke network points can be left in situ, and features such as cornices and windowsills can be left as is, with no modification requirement. It's often the case that meaningful thermal upgrades to older properties are ignored due to the cost problems associated with such enabling works, and, and result in unforeseen added costs. Thin systems such as Space Therm Wall Liner therefore offers specifiers and homeowners a simple option where traditional thermal upgrades are not possible. Even a small upgrade in thermal insulation can raise the internal surface temperature enough to avoid condensation problems. The minimal thickness also allows it to be used on space constrained areas to ensure continuity of thermal insulation. In our example here, a solid, uninsulated masonry wall has a risk of condensation across the whole surface, both the main part of the wall and at the window reveals. If insulation is added to the main surface wall but omitted from the reveals, although the wall surface temperature will increase, the surface temperature of the windows and reveals actually decreases, leading to increased condensation risk in these areas. Even adding a minimal amount of insulation to the reveals will elevate this temperature enough to mitigate the condensation risk, highlighting the importance of a continuous envelope of thermal insulation. In addition to wrap therm and wall liner, high performance space therm aerogel is available in a number of other forms. Space therm multi uses a similar magnesium oxide facing to the wall liner board but with the increased thickness of 6mm. This additional thickness allows the same board to be used in both wall and flooring applications, making Space Therm Multi a simple and versatile one-board solution to upgrading thermal performance of all types of existing structures. Space Therm Multi is available in both 2400x1200 and 1200x600 size panels, with the smaller size board being ideal for projects such as loft conversion where access may be restricted while the inherent moisture resistance of both the Space Therm Aerogel and the Magnesium Oxide facings make it a good option for floors where the presence or condition of damp proofing may be unknown. Where a more traditional finish is required, Space Therm Wallboard offers a plasterboard finish with the same Aerogel insulation as the multiboards. This is fixed onto timber straps or stud work in the same manner as a traditional insulated plasterboard, but offers significantly better performance. For applications where space is even more constricted, Space Therm Direct Fix can be used to omit the requirements for timber strapping and its associated depth. This board incorporates an additional layer of plywood to facilitate the use of short fired fixings into masonry substrates. The hydrophobic nature of Space Therm Aerogel insulation blankets means no additional protection is required on the damp walls, making Space Therm Direct Fix a one-step solution to thermal upgrades on walls with moisture issues. Both the wallboard and the Direct Fix panels are supplied with an inbuilt foil layer. However, if the design criteria require higher permeability, this can be omitted on request, giving a more breathable wall construction, allowing the free passage of moisture. 
We've talked today a lot about moisture movement in existing structures, but how do we assess this and predict the effects of refurbishment accurately? The BS5250 and EN13788 standards cover the assessment of moisture movement in buildings, and both have an important limitation which may lead designers to seek further guidance. Both standards rely on a calculation method known as the Glazer method, which was developed in 1958. Glazer uses steady state heat conduction along with average monthly temperatures and vapour pressures to identify vapour diffusion and model how vapour passes through the building fabric. This gives a reasonable assessment with a comparatively simple process and simplifies data input requirements, however there are limitations. The main problem is that this method only models moisture vapour flowing from inside to outside and completely ignores the effects of external moisture sources such as driven rain. The, the model also does not incorporate the effects of material porosity, moisture absorption and water storage in the building fabric. As is stated in EN13788, the method assumes built-in water has dried out and does not take account of a number of important physical phenomena. The improved EN15026 standard addresses these issues with a new calculation method based around dynamic numerical simulation and moisture flows. This type of simulation provides a far more detailed and accurate representation of the way in which moisture both flows and accumulates in the fabric of buildings, and is a method specified for solid walls with internal insulation in BS5250. This more accurate simulation not only allows for greater variations in environmental conditions and material properties, but also offers a more flexible approach to simulation time periods. Designers can look at minute-by-minute -minute predictions on the building performance, taking many years into the future if required. This additional detail and time can often reveal small problems that can grow and cause severe issues over the years, issues which would commonly be missed by a simple Glazer method calculation. The trade-off to using this more advanced method is more complex simulation software and outputs which are more complex to determine. At the A-Proctor Group, our team of technical advisors are trained to provide these simulations using the Woofy software developed by the Fraunhofer Institute, and we'll move on to take a look at one of these assessments on a solid sandstone wall in more detail now. In this case study, we'll consider a typical solid sandstone external wall. This is a typical traditional wall type found in many areas of the UK. However, in this case, we'll use environmental data from Glasgow and the internal medium conditions defined in EN 15026. The model will be used to examine the performance over a 20 year period to ensure any influence from the construction moisture is eliminated from the assessment and a true representation of the as-built performance is achieved. We'll consider four different cases to upgrade this wall using Space Theorem systems. Firstly, the Space Theorem multi-system with a thin 6mm magnesium oxide facing and no additional vapour control layer giving a vapour permeable solution. And secondly, the Space Theorem wallboard using a conventional foil-backed vapour check plasterboard facing. For both facing types, 10mm and 30mm of insulation will be used, representing both the bare minimum thermal upgrade and one achieving performance closer to modern building regulation standards. The first step in this assessment is to run the model with no insulation to determine which area of the building has the higher inherent condensation risk to establish which represents the worst case. If the upgraded structure is modelled using this element, it can be assumed that other less onerous elements will perform adequately. We can see from the graph here that the west elevation has the highest predicted relative humidity and therefore the highest risk of condensation occurring. So having established the worst case scenario, we can now move on to a more detailed assessment of the wall construction itself. Here we can see the results of the modelling on the first case. 10mm aerogel on a space theorem multiboard. The green line on the lower graph shows the relative humidity through the wall, and the blue line shows the moisture accumulation. In this, although both are higher than would be the case for a more modern wall construction, such as a cavity wall or a timber frame, the moisture content is not increasing year on year. 
If we now increase the insulation thickness to 30mm, we can see that the temperature gradient gets steeper through the insulation. But the relative humidity also increases as the inner surface of the stonework has become cooler. The moisture accumulation graphs are similar though, with no increase in water content. In the next case, we can see that by introducing a vapour check into the space there on board, this serves to limit inward drying, increasing the relative humidity and actually increasing the overall condensation risk. The final case combines the moisture trapping effect with the increased relative humidity from the increased insulation thickness, giving the highest overall condensation risk of all of our four cases. As can be clearly seen, the permeability of the space there on multiboards allows for a greater drying out of the construction, and this is possible to both the interior and the exterior of the building. So considering all of the above, the risk of condensation counterintuitively is lowest when we omit the vapour control measures. The additional detail presented in this more complex assessment also allows designers to better quantify and hence manage the specific risks associated with this insulation upgrade.